Well, hey, good morning, everybody. It's Jill. This is Tuesday Live, uh, actually the first Tuesday of the month live. Uh, so if you're new here, I do go live here on the first Tuesday of the month. I've started doing that here just the past couple of weeks and or the past couple of months. And um, I'm actually going live every Tuesday with my membership group. But I want to come here, you know, on YouTube and just do something with everybody that wants to participate, you know, on the first Tuesday of the month. So uh, been sending out some information. If you've got the information and you're here, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, if you're seeing this after the fact, please know that I'm coming here live to share a tutorial with you on the first Tuesday of the month and would love to have you. So come on in. I see some folks coming in. Hey, Jill. Hey, Deb. Mary Lou. Good morning. So um, I've also been sending out, just starting in September, I have started to put together a weekly newsletter and one went out, uh, it's going out uh, on Mondays. And so I'm trying to share something, I'm calling it Embrace Your Creativity and I'm just trying to share a little bit of, you know, just some creative content, uh, maybe expose you to a new technique or a new uh, artistic concept, maybe a new artist that you haven't uh, looked at before, you know, that type of thing. So um, I would love to hear some feedback on that. A couple of those have gone out already and I know some of you have enjoyed reading it and uh, just seeing the things that I had to share and found it informative and so you can let me know what you think about that. If it's something that you're interested in getting yourself, um, I'm going to have contact information in the description for the video here at the end so you can go in there, contact me, uh, let me add you to the list. I'll make sure that you get that newsletter uh, every week as well and uh, definitely join me on the first Tuesday day live here on YouTube and uh, for, for a full-length free tutorial so I think it'll be a lot of fun uh, good morning everybody's here hey Donna hey Elizabeth good morning Julie's here awesome all right well listen guys I'm gonna go ahead and get started you know for the whole month of September I'm just I'm really trying to focus on this whole idea of the value of sketching and drawing as it relates to painting and um, you know last time I shared with you that you know the drawing you know, everything about the drawing is really the sort of the skeletal structure, the underlying framework, if you will, of your paintings. And so the stronger you are with, you know, your drawing skills, that is going to translate directly into the caliber of your work in terms of your paintings. And, you know, sometimes we don't think about it that much, especially if you've not come in through art circles through a more academic approach where you really are made to start with drawing. A lot of times people just pick up painting for the first time just by grabbing some paints, taking a painting class, and it's perfectly fine to do that, but as time goes by, you will start to realize that there are certain types of paintings or, you know, you maybe you feel yourself wanting to sort of go up to, you know, the sort of the next level with your painting and you're struggling with it. And most of the time it's going to be because you've, you're weak in the area of drawing skills. And so it's just a matter of taking some time to start, you know, acknowledging that, thinking about it and just adding that, you know, adding that practice into daily life just like you've been practicing with painting it's a good idea to start working on sketching and building those muscles because they really do translate into a better quality product in terms of your painting okay so all of September is about sketching and so if you're in my membership we're going to be sketching together every Tuesday this month but for those of you who are new here uh, you're definitely going to sketch with me today we're working in charcoal and I've chosen charcoal because it's such a malleable, uh, flexible medium, and it's almost like painting, but with, with a dry material. You can get so many different values, so many different textures, visual textures, and we're gonna kinda jump into that today. I'm just gonna kinda show you what I've got going on, and if you're following this later, there is a photo that you can download and do the whole tutorial yourself, okay? All right, so let me just flip over to the photo that we're going to be using today. So I've got a black and white photo of this uh, 
you know, kind of a meadow with this lone tree. And, uh, you know, anytime you're working with charcoal um, or pencil, it's kind of a good idea to use a black and white reference. And if you've got a photo that you really like, but it's color, just convert it to grayscale and that will work out for you. Um, so when we're looking at this particular at this particular photo, we've got a lot of values happening here. There's a you know gray is everywhere. Okay, there's some form some some type of value everywhere. Um, the there are clouds in this image, and I want to try to capitalize on that and maybe brighten those a little bit, give those an even lighter value than what I'm seeing in the photo, just to add a little bit of drama. And you know, as artists, we've got the you know the artistic license to do that. So. Uh, so I'm going to start working on that and as we do I'm going to come over to my work area and show you this right quick I'm using a different type of paper than what you've seen me use before this is actually just some uh, white newsprint and it's made by Strathmore and you know Strathmore is not a product that I recommend for watercolor paper uh, at all but they do have good drawing paper and I'm using a Strathmore newsprint uh, just a 9 by 12 and this this type of paper uh, has a really nice surface to it. It's got uh, what we refer to as tooth. It's really got a lot of nice uh, texture to it and uh, it really holds on to the the carbon or the graphite, whatever drawing uh, material you're using. And it's super inexpensive and it really is practice paper. So when you're first starting with charcoal, I highly recommend you know getting some good quality newsprint to practice with and then move into maybe a hot press uh, watercolor paper for you know for a finished paper when you're ready to do like a you know uh, a charcoal drawing an official charcoal drawing but for practice work this is really hard to beat this newsprint so just as i start working on the photo you know i've got you can see the two things side by side i've got a nice horizon line here so i'm just using i'm just using the uh, ruler here as a guide to sort of mark off that lower third down here and i'm just going to take my pounce i showed you this the last time we were here uh, my members out there i'm going to show you how to make one of these um, next week when we're together but i'm just going to use this to go ahead and just kind of start laying in a little bit of value right here uh, getting this across here and I didn't really tone the whole paper like I did last time. This paper's got a little bit of tone. You can see in comparison to just some really white drawing paper, you know, the newsprint has already got a little bit of grayish tone to it. So I didn't bother with toning the whole paper, but I am gonna kind of come in here and add a little bit of value down at the bottom to just kind of start, start bringing in some of the value that I see here. And then I'm gonna take one of my little vine sticks. I've got several different little drawing implements here. I've got charcoal pencils, vine sticks. I've even got a little charcoal brick. If you missed the video that I did last time on all of these, you can, you can check that out. I'll have a link in the description for you to go back to that one as well. But you can see all of the different little tools that I'm using here to kind of put this drawing together. So I'm just going to use my little vine stick to kind of come in and start, you know, adding a little bit of value um, and sketching a little bit. When I'm working with a charcoal drawing, I don't really sketch anything with pencil. Um, pencil and charcoal don't really mix that well. Uh, the graphite, um, it's a different type of material and just in a molecular, if you want to talk about it in terms of molecular structure, uh, it's really smooth, has little platelet shapes, and they lay onto the paper in a much different way than the charcoal does. And so that's why they kind of don't really blend together. And so I even do my underdrawing with just a little bit of charcoal sketching. So I'm just using a little willow charcoal stick to kind of come in here and just sort of sketch out sort of an outline shape of this little tree that's out here on the, on the horizon just kind of give it some little shape and I do have these nice little puffy white clouds that are sort of you know rolling across the skyscape here so I want to leave my paper alone in those areas I want that area to stay as, as light as I can so just using my pounce I'm going to kind of come in and uh, start establishing some of the gray value that I see in the sky and just moving all of this material around with my fingers, with my pounce, however you want to do it. 
I've got um, a darker sort of vignetted corner uh, over here in this particular little drawing or in this little photo so I'm going to try to keep you know keep up with that with my charcoal I want to build up that value over here a little bit darker too and you know just like we talked about last week you know you can spread the charcoal around with your fingers you can you know get a paintbrush involved to move it around you know you can do some different things with this it's kind of you're kind of uh, free to sort of handle it how you want to and just experiment that's the main thing experiment get your hands dirty and uh, see what works for you I'm going to bring this value of the sky on across the tree here because I know that it's back there. I'm just going to move this stuff around. And one of the things that's great about drawing, sketching with charcoal, it does a couple of things for you in terms, you know, of preparing for a painting. It, um, it forces you to really focus on your values. You have to pay attention to where all the mediums, lights, darks are. You've got to really be careful that you are really grabbing those values. And as you start working through with charcoal, it's, you know, you really just have one choice. You've only got one tone that you're working with, this, this black charcoal. And so you're forced to, you know, ease up, darken, you know, sort of figure out, you know, where, where the value shifts are. And that starts just developing your eye for value. And that's very important when it comes to our paintings, because then once you add color into the mix, then you've got a whole other set of problem solving skills to, to bear into mind. Uh, so it's really important to nail value first because it's really the most important. So it really helps you with value. And then second, you're just building your drawing skills because, you know, you're working in here, you're coming in here with this new material and, you know, starting to actually put pencil to paper or put carbon to paper in this case. And it really causes you to start thinking more about your drawing. You've got this sort of pinpoint control it's a little bit different than a paintbrush but this material is so flexible and can move around so easily it's almost like painting in some ways but with just a dry medium all right so i'm starting to uh, kind of lay in some of these values that i'm seeing for the sky and i want to kind of come in and start adding a little bit of uh, definition and structure i'm really kind of focusing on drawing now of just really kind of capturing the things that I'm seeing in this little tree out here. And the visual textures that I can achieve with the charcoal, I can do lots of scribbling. You know, I've got this nice smooth texture just with fine dust, but I can also come in and do some scribbling with it, much like I would with my paintbrush when I would get ready to, you know, start working on developing some of these shapes for the trees. And when you're drawing, you really do kind of, you start really paying attention a little bit more. You start, you know, you're not focusing on color. And so you really it kind of forces your mind to really start paying attention to the actual shapes that are there, the actual values that are there. And you're really building the structure of, of what you see. And that's one of the reasons that drawing is so important. It's because you're really training your eye to look and observe and capture the things that you see. You know, a lot of the work that I do is abstract, you know, landscape. Um, and one of the things that I tell my students is that, you know, the better able you are to sort of more accurately render something realistically, uh, the better you are able to then manipulate that, sort of stylize and add your own voice, you know, and bring some abstraction into play. Uh, if you've got a really good solid foundation on shape and form and value, then you can kind of start to play with it and manipulate it a little bit. And all of that accuracy comes from drawing practice. There's so much observation involved. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so that you can kind of see the textures that I'm forming here. You can see I can get so many textures with this one, just this one little willow stick that I've got here. And the willow stick that I'm using is giving me kind of a, it's a darker value, but it's still not as dark as I need to get um, ultimately inside this little tree. But 
but this kind of gives me that nice medium value that I can kind of start to work with, a dark medium value, and then I can start to bring in some more darker value in a little bit. So I'm just having to look really carefully at my shapes and what's going on in this little tree. And you can see I'm just almost doing this little scribbly line work to create the little textures of the tree, but it's really effective in kind of getting that shape. And I can assure you that once I spend some time going through a little landscape like this, working with charcoal, just one that you know, just one medium, just focusing on values, then when I get ready to start, you know, maybe doing a painting of this. I am, I've just, I've, my brain is just so fixated on, you know, all the values that I was able to find. And I'm going to, in turn, be able to make sure to include those things inside my painting. You know, whereas before, if I just sort of jumped into the painting, I might not really think about it that much because I had not really spent time focusing on it. But it really does make a difference. Now, as I'm going through, I'm really looking for these really dark spots. I really want to grab those. Those are the ones that are really easy to see. If you kind of squint, especially, you know, I'm just looking through and grabbing those really dark, darkest marks. Like there's even these little trunks of the tree that are in there too. And I can kind of come in here and do a little bit of blending just with my finger, you know, to kind of soften some of these shapes. Um, I don't want to over soften. I kind of like having a little bit of texture because it really lets me see that it's foliage. So I can make all kinds of little marks. So I'm just going to kind of keep going through with this for just a little bit, catching the rest of these values that are sort of hiding in this little tree here. adding a little bit more texture here and the edges of the tree you know they it just kind of if you look at it it just they just break off into these tiny little specks almost the little tree the foliage is so delicate on the edges it's almost kind of lacy you know on the edges and so I'm just letting the edge of the willow just make little marks little random marks to kind of mimic those shapes that I'm seeing And if I want to, I can even get, you know, get into my one of my pencils. You know, these are a little bit darker. This one is actually a 6B, uh, so it's a little bit darker. So I can start coming in now and building up the value a little bit more. You can see how much darker this one is. Now I can kind of come in here now and start really sort of punching in some of those values where they're really, really nice and dark. And uh, those little branches, or excuse me, not the branches, but there's little tree trunks that I'm seeing inside that tree there. And it's just such a freedom to work with charcoal because I don't have, I'm not thinking about color at all. I just, just don't even have to think about it. Uh, it's, I'm not even registering color. I'm just thinking about value and where is it dark, where is it light? because those, uh, being able to really capture those things visually is so critical to your paintings later because value is what really tells the story. Value always tells the story of form way more than color does. I see some dark, you know, it's some kind of shape out there on the horizon. It's just this grassy, you know, kind of stuff that's happening out there. I'm going to zoom back out just a little. There we go. So I'm starting to see some more little shapes and values. And I'm just kind of coming in here. There's this sort of dark line that goes out along the horizon. And, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to figure out what that is or anything. I'm just going to lay that value in where I see it. And there's some little dark undergrowth from this tree that's down here in shadow and just getting that in there so you know if you've spent time especially as an oil painter or acrylic painter you know working on landscapes you can really come in with your brush and really start working on this foliage and 
you know we've we've all you know spent time doing that especially with with opaque mediums and so working with charcoal can kind of feel like that a lot you know with drawing you are using kind of an opaque medium and so you can really lay these dark values in and they just stick right there on the top and it just feels very satisfying but my tree is just starting to take on form it's just starting to take on that three-dimensional quality it's really sitting out there on the landscape and you know I am trying to accurately render you know uh, as I'm looking at the tree I really want to try to capture its actual shape that I'm seeing that's part of that observation just practicing your observation practicing where the shapes are practicing where the values are and the more accurately you can render what's really there uh, then you've got a lot of um, a lot of skills kind of tucked away and hidden for you know working into a more abstract sort of nature it really does help if you're familiar with you know any of the masters you know Picasso and um, Klimt and Oh my goodness, the list goes on. Um, but you can look at any of these great, you know, abstract artists that we're familiar with. And if you'll look at some of their early work as they were, you know, working as, you know, apprentices and coming up through sort of the academic approach to art, you know, um, some of their drawings, paintings, uh, they're just, they're absolutely phenomenal. So well crafted, so the, the very high realism. You know they were masters of observation and so having those skills in your pocket are what allow you to then move later into you know abstracting your forms a little bit more and bringing a little bit more uh, personal commentary into your work uh, but you know these draftsmanship skills are really important for observation capturing value capturing shape um, and just empower you to do a lot of different things with it moving forward in your own artistic journey. But it does take practice. So I'm just kind of working through some of these shapes. I'm looking at, you know, looking through the tree and you can start to see lots of form uh, is beginning to happen and develop as I start working into this, into this little tree. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more for the whole picture. Now, now I can kind of start looking at some issues or, you know, some things that I need to look at in terms of, you know, where my values are. So, you know, my tree, you know, there are some sections in the tree where I can see that it could be a little bit darker. And so those are just some areas I'm going to pay attention to, start paying attention to. I'm going to kind of blend in some darker value down here. There's a lot going on in the little tree. And the landscape, or excuse me, the uh, the little field out here, you know, there's a lot of dark value out here as well. So I want to make sure that I'm capturing that. I've got to bring a lot more darker value into the foreground. Just sort of capturing this little texture that I see right here. There's like a little, a little tuft of grasses that are growing right here. And so since I've got a larger area to cover, I'm just going to get my pounce back out here and really just kind of lay on some extra value. There's sort of that vignette happening with this particular photo where it's really dark right around the edges. So I want to get that in there. And if you've noticed, or if you've worked with charcoal at all, you know, your paper can get really saturated with charcoal and you wind up having a bunch of powder sitting on top and you can't quite get it any darker. It just seems to not want to get any darker. That's because you, your, your paper has just been saturated. It can only hold so much of the powder. And that's one of the great things about um, this newsprint paper. It can just hold, uh, hold the charcoal. It can just keep grabbing and holding more and more charcoal. So it really allows you to build up a lot of darker values. I can see that there's sort of, you know, when I compare the two, you know, the drawing and the, uh, the photo, there's sort of this lighter area right here uh, that's sort of, you know, happening in the photo. So I want to make sure that I'm, you know, taking that into account too. Um, 
this is such an using this little pounce is such an easy way to just add lots of value right into the right into your drawing and then I can just start moving it around and again you know you can get a paintbrush if you want to and kind of come in here and move this stuff around um, there's lots of different ways you can kind of manipulate the charcoal I tend to sort of just like using my fingers um, it does get a little dirty but that's okay there's all these little textures that I'm seeing out in the field too so I've kind of got like a base value in here but there's all these little you know tufts of grass that are out here that kind of give this texture I'm going to take my little willow and I'm actually just laying it down on its side and just kind of making some little horizontal shapes back and forth here to kind of mimic it looks like the field has got has been you know mown down but I'm still seeing these little striations of grass growing so you can just you know place the charcoal move it in whatever direction you want to kind of get these little shapes it's very forgiving I can even use a more solid uh, charcoal brick you know that's been compressed it'll bring even some darker marks and even some darker value I can I do need to get darker over here in this corner and this compressed charcoal stick helps me do this I love that charcoal comes in so many different um, I don't know just so many different forms of it because they each provide so many different unique visual textures and see I can just even with just rubbing that this hard compressed brick across the paper you know it's kind of picking up some of the texture that I might have on my board underneath but it's giving me some really nice let me hold it up close to where you can see it you can see all those nice textures in there uh, that are just forming on the paper um, you're giving me so many nice values let me look over here I've just I've been drawing without uh, really looking at my comments let me look over here make sure I haven't missed any comments um, oh Ralph is here hey Ralph good morning uh, Julie's asking will you be painting this picture in watercolor in the future um, uh, for my membership yes Julie and, and you're in there I'm definitely going to be doing that I'm going to be kind of walking you through you, you know walking you guys through you know selecting you know selecting a particular image and then going you know start to finish with working with it in charcoal and then what's you know what are, what are the steps into you know taking it on into watercolor what's involved and all of that good stuff so I'm definitely going to be walking everybody through that because uh, it's it's a fun part of the process uh, as well so absolutely we're going to be doing that all right so so I've kind of you know this is almost feels like painting it really does feel like painting because the powder is so smooth uh, it moves in such a fluid way it'll just go anywhere you want it to it really feels a lot like watercolor but it's just dry and uh, so fun to work with and it's also making me really think about my values in fact I want to get my ruler involved again here and lay this back out here just so that I can get a really nice edge for the top of my little meadow out here let's see so I'm just taking my one of my pencils the top of that meadow is really dark over on the sides more so than in the center area but I'm just kind of coloring against this I use a ruler like this for horizon lines even when I'm watercolor painting too and just like with watercolor painting I'm going to lift and pull toward me so that I don't smear any of the charcoal all right so I'm starting to really kind of see this start to emerge and it's starting to really make me think of the photo that I'm working with every time I start adding more values I can start to see areas where I maybe I need to get my tree a little bit darker or refine the shape of my tree a little bit more as I'm going it's really lots of fun to to do this all right now here's a fun part 
So I've gotten a lot of these values in here. I've got lots of mediums, lots of darks happening in here. I want to start turning my attention to my clouds a little bit. Uh, you know, the clouds are, they're very light um, in the photo. I want them to be even a little bit brighter, a little bit, you know, providing me with a little bit more contrast, um, you know, in terms of the, the whole, the overall composition. So I'm going to start bringing in a little bit of, you know, they call it white charcoal. It's a little bit of a misnomer because there is really no white charcoal. It's actually sort of uh, like it's gypsum. So it's that same stuff that, you know, is in your your drywall, um, your sheetrock. Um, but it's been compressed together with some different kind of binders and, and that type of thing. I'm just refining the shape of my tree a little bit compared to my photo. I'm a little bit off there. All right, so, so I've got a couple of different forms of white charcoal. You can get just a white charcoal pencil, and, and so you've got this nice little white, um, this is just gypsum in here, and this is actually like a, a Conte crayon uh, in white. And so these are, you know, Generals makes this one. There's several different brands, but Generals is, is really pretty good. But uh, I would highly recommend getting some of these. And for those of you that are in my membership, I'm going to have all the information that you need on this uh, when we start moving forward, because you guys need to get some of these things uh, for the rest of the month. Uh, but these give you some nice white marks. And in fact, when I come into my paper with like this white, this is like a hard chalk, you know, I can come in here and start really, you know, laying this in and you can start to see, you know, white is just laying down onto the paper there. Uh, I'm really able to start to lighten that value like I want. And I'm really going to start working on these little cloud shapes. So you notice I didn't like come in here and draw an outline of the clouds. You can do that. And uh, in, in fact, you know, doing it with your white, uh, with your white uh, is kind of an okay way to sort of approach it. Uh, if you want to, you just want to be able to not have any harsh lines around your clouds. You do want them to be kind of soft. So I'm kind of coming, come into my drawing here. And since my paper was already a little bit toned, it was a little bit darker than this white, then the white really stands out, you know, on top and, and shows up a little bit more. So I'm just kind of, kind of come through here, sketching, adding in some of this white where the where the clouds would be. And I had not been especially accurate with, you know, the placement of my the values in the sky earlier. I just sort of uh, generalized a little bit when I came through, but with this white, I'm going to be a little bit more exacting and really kind of try to place the white where I'm seeing the, where I'm actually seeing the clouds. Now you can get these chalks like this. This one is a, this one is actually kind of a hard chalk, um, but you can get softer ones. They come in sort of different textures and that type of thing. But you can see the lighter value already. And I'm gonna add a little bit over here on this side too. And there's some up here. It's not as dark. I've got something under my board here under my paper. A little bit of white or light kind of up there, sort of around behind that tree. All right, I'm going to come back now with just my, my white pencil and kind of start working in some of these edges. I can have a little bit more control with the edge and um, kind of get some white. You know, there's some white that's showing up sort of in between, let me zoom in, you know, I can use the white to come in here and add some of this cloud in between. And if you're wondering, could you have just put white all behind the tree? You could have, but it would make it very difficult for the gray values to really stand out. Um, they're going to want to really blend in with that white and sort of make this milky gray color, which is really not what you want to look for. So this kind of becomes that um, really similar to a, an opaque painting approach where you've kind of got to go in between and sort of add a few little sky elements. 
but you can see already just the, the contrast that starts to happen. Uh, there's some lighter white down in here too. I'm just bringing my little white pencil in here. And I just, I love doing this. I'm just, I don't have to think about color, not for one second. I'm just thinking about shape and value. It's one of the beautiful things about drawing and why so much drawing, you know, if you come through, especially in a, a, a more classical type academic approach, you know, um, I did that, you know, I came through art school and you draw you know, for the first year and a half before you ever take a painting class, you just draw. That's all you're kind of allowed to do because it's so vital to you grasping and understanding, you know, how to deal with value, how to make sure you're taking care of value that, you know, it just, you don't even start working on painting for, for a good while. I'm gonna zoom in so I can show you something right here. Now inside my little tree, there are some, whoops, there are some white light spaces that exist, you know, in between the, the little, uh, the trunks of this little tree. And so I'm just using my kneaded eraser and I'm, you know, that's what's so great about it. I can shape it into any shape. So I've kind of got this little narrow, almost like a little dashed line shape, but it's perfect for me to come into my tree and just lift out a little bit because see there is some space in between these little tree trunks here and there, just little specks of light, of sky, daylight coming through. And I'm just reforming my little shape on my eraser because it'll get dirty every time you, you know, take off a little bit. See, I've got some charcoal on there. So I just fold it over, expose a new clean piece of eraser and kind of keep going but it lets me really come in here and be kind of exacting and lift out some of these places where a little bit of daylight needs to come through. It's always fun to do that. It's kind of like adding the highlights, you know, at the end of a, at the end of a painting. Let me zoom back out. All right, so I've got a little landscape really coming along here. All right, so I'm going to look back at my photo, just kind of pay attention a little bit to where things are. I see that there are some values in, you know, in my clouds. I can see them in there. They're not, it's not just this white shape. I do have some shadow happening in some of these clouds. So I'm just coming back in here with my, um, with my vine charcoal and I'm gonna start building some little shadow shapes right on top of where I had put the white. And this is one thing that you can't do with pencil. You know, the, the two, the, the white charcoal and the regular charcoal, they blend really well together. You can't really come in with pencil and, and do too many things because they just, they don't lay on the paper the same way and they kinda, they're almost like an oil and water mix. They just don't sort of like to go together. So I'm just adding a little bit of shadow and tone. You know, on the underside, I can see some of the clouds have got little shapes in them. And your, your finger is one of the best blending tools that you can, that you can use, it really is. So I'm just coming back into my clouds and adding some shapes here. There's all kinds of little hidden, little shadowy bits in here. And then some of the sky is actually a little bit darker. Right above here, I'm just going to add a little bit more of my charcoal powder right here. really start kind of defining the edge of some of these clouds a little bit more. You 
you'll notice right here you see I've got a spot right here on my paper that has formed uh, that was obviously some kind of um, uh, sometimes the paper will have little specks or spots in it and uh, you know you might get a little weird shape sometimes and sometimes even the oils from your skin when you were handling the paper before you started your drawing can kind of bring that in to play sometimes too so I had some kind of little thing and I might have had that on my board underneath so didn't quite mean for that to be there but Just going to kind of keep going through, get my little vine charcoal again. Some more little shadows in here. And if it's been a while since you've drawn with charcoal, or maybe you've never even drawn with it at all, uh, it is a very just sort of nearly meditative type of process. There's something uh, just about the sound and just the tactile uh, nature of just the the charcoal against the paper it really is um, very fun to do very fun to do all right so I think what I'm going to do now I do have that big dark mark on my page I don't know if there's anything I can do about it I'm just going to try to lift a little bit just to maybe keep it from looking quite so dark but if you get something like that, you know, when you're working with your good paper, you're not going to do this. This this was just sort of a practice page, but sometimes you can get that with your with your newsprint. I'm just looking for some more places to maybe add some values, and I just really wanted to make these clouds a little bit more dramatic, you know, in my in my sketch than what I'm seeing in the photo. I'm just using my eraser to kind of come in and soften even more some of these cloud edges. Just kind of lifting a little bit here. And it's just this back and forth, just lifting, you know, moving, moving the charcoal around, taking, putting some on, taking some off. It's really such a fun medium, so flexible. You can do so many different things with it. I'm just coming around the edge of my tree and lightening up a couple of these little areas. And if I wanted to, I could even take you know my eraser and come into my tree and just add a few little highlights. I'm just I can zoom in so that you can see it. You can see, look how much texture the charcoal will give you. Uh, I'm just taking my little eraser and I just sort of formed it into like a little point, you know, so that I can use it to just come into the drawing and just do some lifting, just to some little light specks to just sort of create the illusion of light bouncing off of the foliage. And when it gets dirty, I can just sort of um, just move the eraser around, just kind of reshape it a little bit, get a new clean spot, and come right back into it. In that front area, just about ready to wrap this little sketch up, uh, in the front area, I've got a little bit more lifting that I want to do. I got the foreground nice and dark, like I feel like it is, you know, in the in the photo. But I want to, I want to lighten just a little bit and add a little bit more visual texture in here. So I'm just kind of coming into the drawing with my eraser and just lifting a little bit, just lightening that up like I'm seeing in the in the photo it's a little bit lighter that's almost like a spotlight is happening on the field out there and then when your eraser starts to get a little bit dirty and saturated just fold it back over to reveal a new clean area so that you can continue lifting and I'm sort of doing this horizontal side-to-side -side motion 
to kind of make sure I keep that field, you know, keep that nice, nice flat appearance going. Just a little bit of blending, but just kind of revealed that lighter area coming back out. That little spotlight that's happening, kind of spotlight effect that's happening there. All right, I think that might be it for this little sketch, but you can see, I'm going to see if I can get both of these on here at the same time so that you can kind of see them together. So, you know, there's a lot of different... Uh, values that I adjusted just to add a little bit more drama uh, but I wanted to make sure that you know that there's you know all these little textures that I wanted to try to make and there's still you know I could even come in here with just my um, my little uh, willow stick you know and just make some more little textures in here little vertical lines that almost mimic little grass shapes I would want to be careful in doing that just because uh, just the whole issue of scale, you know, I don't want the, I don't want the grass to be, you know, in the foreground area. I can kind of capitalize on some of those little vertical shapes, but, but I can make so many different textures just with, you know, just with the charcoal. Let me hold it up close so that you can see some of these. But it's really wonderful. It was a smooth sheet of paper. But look at all the different textures that I can get with just using, you know, just the dust from burned wood. It's just absolutely incredible. It's, you know, definitely one of the oldest mediums on the planet. Uh, cave drawings were done this way. And, uh, you know, charcoal is very fleeting and will come off. And so you do need to use a, a fixative. And in fact, I had mentioned this last week. I'm not going to spray this one right now, but uh, this is the this is the fixative that I use. It's called Lasco, and uh, it's a little pricey, but um, I'm telling you, it really is worth it. Uh, if you've used, if you've had sort of any, you know, nightmares with uh, with fixative before, what really winds up happening is when you use the fixative and you spray it on your work, it will totally alter your colors. Uh, if you've been using pastel, it will alter your values. If you've been using charcoal, and all of a sudden your drawing looks completely different than when you finished it, and it's very disappointing. And so uh, this one does not do that, though. And but you're you're paying for it. So uh, I think these were like. Um, uh, I think Jerry's has them for like $26 right now. And so depending on how many, you know, how much you're drawing, uh, you know, one of these will last you for a good while unless you're doing really large drawings. But, you know, small, 9 by 12 or smaller, this is going to last you quite a good, quite a good time. And um, if you're just really trying to save some money on a fixative, please don't use hairspray. But, you know, Krylon makes a fixative for... Well, it's it's for any dry media like pencil, charcoal, or pastel, but I would only recommend using it on charcoal. It still does not do a good job with holding color. It really will shift your colors if you spray it onto, um, you know, a pastel drawing. So, uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And so, you know, after going through a whole exercise like this where you've put together, you know, a sketch where you've got, you've been really focusing for, you know, I mean, we've been focusing for like, you know, the past half hour really heavily on just value, value and shape, value and shape, value and shape. And those are the absolute foundation for any imagery that you're going to create in any future painting. And so now, after I've spent time doing this, if I, you know, ne next, you know, move into the phase of actually getting out my watercolor paper and then converting this into a painting, I am so fully equipped you know, mentally with all of this value information, all this shape information that, you know, it the the going into the painting almost feels like a refresher, you know, I've already I've already been there and so it's going to feel, you know, much easier to go in with a lot more confidence and knowing exactly where those values are going to be and and knowing how to accurately get them into position because I've been practicing that sketching. I've been practicing those those values so it's so so important uh, to spend time doing this so if you don't have a sketchbook 
um, I highly recommend that you start practicing sketching. It's so important and it really will improve the quality and caliber of your paintings. Even if you're working abstractly, you know, like I've mentioned before, being able to really accurately render is all about those really strong observational skills. And so if you've spent time really developing good observational skills, then you can start to move beyond that, almost like a jazz musician going into an improv. You know, you can really start to expand past that and begin to stylize and to manipulate and to bring abstraction into the work when you want to move into an area where you're really trying to bring more of an emotive aspect into the work instead of just very accurately rendering. But being able to really render is so key you know, it's like really knowing how to play the scales really well before you start really improvising and kind of going outside uh, that natural framework into something totally different. If you've got those real strong foundations, it makes it so much easier for you to do that, okay? So that's one of the things that I'm focusing on in September with you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was informational, fun, and uh, get your hands dirty. It's so fun to get into charcoal. It's very inexpensive. Uh, the materials to, to get started with it are very inexpensive and you're building very valuable skills that are going to pay off big time in the long run no matter what type of painting you're doing. All right guys so let me see if anybody had any questions. Uh, uh, thank you Nancy. Uh, Nancy said it was a beautiful drawing. I appreciate that Nancy. Thank you. I look forward to seeing uh, what you guys come up with especially for all my members. Definitely post your work in our group and if you're interested in kind of connecting with me online but you're not ready for a membership you're at, uh, yet, I do have a free group. It's called uh, Exploring Abstract Landscapes and Watercolor. It's over on Facebook. There's a link for that in the description for this video. Uh, I'd love to have you over there and uh, I connect with my folks over there you know a couple of different times in month and also making sure that you guys uh, get uh, get one of these videos that I'm sharing with my membership. You'll get it on the first Tuesday of the month. Uh, you're always welcome to do that. And of course, sign up for my newsletter so that I can share some good creative content with you every week. So uh, if you've got questions, comments, definitely subscribe, all that good stuff. If you've got anything, contact me. I will help you as much as I can and I will see you guys.